today on Twin City Wrestling. Instead of names from the past, you'll see the legends of tomorrow. Competitive matches, less talk, more action. This is not sports entertainment. This is professional wrestling. This is Twin City Wrestling. I'm Adria Young. Welcome to the premiere of Twin City Wrestling on Eastlink TV. Coming up in this edition, the silent and mysterious El Hansimo takes on one of the hardest working pro wrestlers in Atlanta, Canada, the self-admiring fan of fashion, Narcissus Saint. The championship is on the line as dazzling Dick Durning defends his title against a man who's been looking for months for a shot like this. Halifax's Sexton Phoenix challenges in our main event. We'll hear from TCW owner Cyril Richards about why tag team champions R&R Express were not at a recent live event as they were supposed to be. Cyril and R&R have been butting heads lately. Right now, high-flying Cuban Mr. 450 Julius Fantana takes on this man, Remy Petit, who had a few words for us earlier tonight. Mesdames et messieurs, mon nom est Remy Petit et je demeure en Louisiana. J'ai appris les deux langues parce que longtemps passé, les Anglais ont décidé de déporter mes ancêtres en 1755. J'ai été élevé à apprendre les deux langues parce que je me suis dit une journée, j'allais revenir ici et j'allais emporter la révolution. Mesdames et messieurs, bienvenue à votre fin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the first match presented by TCW Live in Liverpool. Our first competitor, weighing in at 300 pounds, from Baton Rouge, Remy Petit. It's a beautiful night in Liverpool, Nova Scotia. I am Scott Simpson. Welcome to the debut of Twin City Wrestling on East Link Television. Remy Petit has a few words for the audience, and I bet they're going to be in French. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs, mon nom est Remy Petit. Et la Révolution Française est arrivée. Remy, we could use a translation. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot where I was. You inbred hicks don't understand my beautiful language of French. So let me dumb it down for you people. Let me dumb it down. My name is Rémi Petit. The French Revolution has arrived. Rémi Petit is not strictly French. He's Acadian. Makes his home in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the competitor that will face Mr. Rémi Petit is Julius. Mr. 450 Fantana, weighing 175 pounds from Little Havana, Cuba. This luchador is a rubber ball of a man. Hugely popular with the fans. Not a big guy, but what a heart. As he mocks Remy Petit, saying what a gut that guy has. Julius Fantana bounces around the ring like you've never seen before. The kids just love this guy. Initially, this seems like a mismatch. I'm wondering what uh, TCW owner Cyril Richards must have been thinking here when he put this match together. And we're underway for the very first match. It looks like there's a significant size differential here. Remy Petit is a huge guy, 300 pounds. Julius Fantana, sub 200 by about 25 pounds. They tie up in the center ring. Remy 
He's not just big. Obviously, he's strong, too. Tossing Julius Fantana around like a rag doll, but he's not going to just take it. He's going to give it back, I'm sure. It looks like Julius Fantana will not up. Oh, I was just about to say, he's better off not tying up and testing strength. Although, I don't know if he can get his hands all the way around Remy's midsection. Big hip toss sends Fantana into the air. Julius Fantana is no stranger to being airborne by any means. Famous for his 450 splash coming up off the top rope, spinning 450 degrees in the air and ends up flat on his back and obviously in agony. Remy Petit is taunting his opponent in French. Hey, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. If you want the latest TCW news, that's one place you can go. Interact with some of the wrestlers. Interact with some of the wrestling fans. We often use the hashtag TCW New Age. Petit comes off the ropes with a head of steam and nearly decapitates Julius Fantana. He'd be wise to go for a pin right here. You'd think all he has to do is lay on him. Fantana, though, made of sterner stuff, gets a shoulder up, and the match continues. Remy Petit insists that that was three, or trois. Body slam takes Fantana down, comes off the ropes. With a senton bomb, he calls the deportation frustration. Only two counts. Remy Petit's motivation is that his people were deported from the Maritimes years ago. He's not over it. Oh, 300 plus pounds on the middle of little Julius Fantana's back. He's trying to tell the referee that is a legal move. If he was standing in the middle of the ring, yes, but given that he was touching the ropes, that's not a legal move. Stiff kicks from Fantana. Full Nelson into a massive bomb. That could very well spell the end for Mr. 450. Although Petit looks like he wants to give him more. He could be setting him up for a big spear. Calls that spear the au revoir. Charges. Fantana jumps over. Spinning back kick. Looks like he knocked. It looks like he knocked him right out. And he gets three. Remy Petit comes to just as the referee's hand hits the mat the third time. And your winner by pinfall, Julius, Mr. 450, Fantana! Mr. 450 scores the win in the first match here on Twin City Wrestling on East Lake. Remy Petit is asking the referee what hit him. I don't know what the French translation of what just hit me is. High five for Mr. 450 to the kids in the audience. Remy Petit wants some more, I think. I'd be willing to bet these two are gonna tangle again in the future. Let's see if we can get the boss to set up another match between these two. Ooh, that's a guy you don't want to mess with. Don't make him angry and get in his face. Speak English, say the fans. Not much luck with this guy. Let's throw it back to Adrian Young at the command center. Next up, a situation that's been simmering for some time. 
Tag team champs Iron R Express have a beef with TCW owner Cyril Richards. Cyril began inserting himself into the ring at a midsummer show at the South Shore Exhibition in Bridgewater, overtly siding with Iron R's opponents. Just before a wild hardcore rules match versus Gyration Nation, Cyril clearly wants the belts off. Rick and Rodney Owens. Gyration Nation. You guys are tag team championship material. Yeah, we are. We are the future tag team champions. He talks about the new age. We are the new age of professional wrestling. The ensuing match was wild. Both teams gave it their all. But despite Cyril's confidence in Gyration Nation, Rick and Rodney prevailed and kept the title. In just a few minutes, we'll find out from the boss himself whether R&R &R no-showed or perhaps Cyril himself did something to deprive the fans of their trailer park heroes. Speaking of heroes, let's hear from a man who we'll see in the coming weeks on TCW, the last action hero, Wesley Pipes. Death. Are you people bored to death with the lack of action on your television sets? Hi. I'm the last action hero, Wesley Pipes, and new people may remember me from such action-packed classic matches as Welcome to the Major Leagues, Punk, or White Man Cam Bump. How about my personal favorite, Blade? <laughs> Who brings a knife to a gunfight? So Twin City Wrestling, if you're ready for the hardest hitting, most intense, explosive action, like only I, the last action hero, can deliver, then forget about your Stallones, then forget about your Schwarzeneggers, because they won't be back. But Wesley Pipes is here. So get out those cameras, because it's time for bright lights and big pipes. Hello parents and children, it's me, it's me, it's Mr. 450, Julius Fantana, and I'm here to tell you, please do not try this at home. We practice every day, every day we're working as hard as we can to accomplish a good, entertaining show just for you fans. Love yous. Welcome back to Liverpool, Nova Scotia for more Twin City Wrestling. We are awaiting the arrival of the boss, Cyril Richards, there he is. It looks like he brought a dead microphone from the back. Caillou's gonna have to give him his microphone. Cyril has some explaining to do. Tag team champions r, r Express weren't at the last show. And perhaps Cyril has some understanding of why. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Cyril Richards. The owner of Twin City Wrestling. I'd like to thank you for coming. And I'd like to address something at the same time. Oh, here we go. Our, the trip. Oh, oh, R&R Express couldn't make it last month. They came up. What was that? <laughs> R&R Express couldn't make it last month.
as I was just about to say, R&R &R Express couldn't make it last month. And, yeah, I, and I apologize. There was a... What do you think about that, Cyril? Where were they, bud? I we checked the mailbox, bud. I sent them in the mail. You did? Where to? In the mail. Where to? Where are we from? It seems where to me. From? It seems Hamble to me. Hamble Park. It wasn't there in Hamble Park, bud. Oh, I sent it to uh, Sunnyvale. It seems what? to me, Cyril. It seems to me. You didn't want us here. It seems to me you didn't want us here. Oh, it seems to me you didn't want us here. Of course. You didn't want us here. Seems to me you didn't want us here. Yeah, of course. You're the tag team champ. That's right. Why, Why does I Cyril keep looking at the curtain? Why wouldn't I want you at the show? Well, explain it. He's acting awfully shifty. Wait, we know the cards weren't there, but we can't get there. No, yes, the cards were Let there. the crowd know! The cards were there. I sent them in the mail. The problem is, you guys didn't... Who is that? You guys That's didn't Shahir bother Rasool. checking the mailbox. And Lumberjack Johnson. We thought Rasool was on the shelf with a broken arm. Looks like he's recovered. Get him! Ah, oh, stomping on the back of the neck. How you like that? There's your gas card. There's your gas card. Is that any way for a businessman to behave? I brought these two. I brought Shahir Razul back. I brought Lumberjack Johnson in. These two guys. These belts. Get used. Give it a kiss. Give it a kiss. It's making him kiss the belt. That's your last kiss, goodbye. What a shameful display by Cyril Richards. Listen, I know he doesn't think that a couple of smoking and drinking redneck types are an appropriate representation of the company. But this is no way to handle it. Rick and Rod know who Shahir Rasool is. They know who Lumberjack Johnson is. They certainly weren't expecting to be jumped from behind by the two of them, though. Hopefully, Rick and Rodney can recover and come back and do something about this. So it looks like Cyril lured r, r into a trap. We can look forward to a showdown between those bearded baddies and the rough and ready boys from the trailer park. If not in this episode, definitely the next one. Let's head up to ringside for our next match. Here comes a guy who knows a thing or 12 about fashion. He's a pretty boy. Hailing from Hamilton, not Steel Town, Ontario, Hamilton, Bermuda. With his hair coiffed and in a ponytail, this is Narcissus Saint. For a long time, Narciss Saint has been the tag team partner of a man named Sexton Phoenix, and they've had some success around the Maritimes. Saint's wrestling on his own now, and he's found some success too. He's an interesting hybrid of a wrestler. He can do the aerial stuff. He can do the traditional mat wrestling. He's a little unpredictable that way. His downfall, if anything, is he's cocky. And his competitor this evening, weighing in at 200 pounds, from Big Havana, Cuba, El Asimo. Here is El Ham.
In the tradition of masked wrestlers, I guess he's just been wearing his mask all day. Referee's checking him out, making sure he has no objects hidden in that uh, spandex leotard. Of course, offering the same courtesy to Narciss Saint. The two competitors are roughly evenly sized. I know a bit of the background of Narciss Saint, seen him wrestle plenty of times. But El Hansimo? Well, he's a mystery. Mixed response from the crowd. I don't think Narciss Saint is uh, used to having people cheer for him. And by the same token, I don't think El Hansimo is <laughs> used to having people boo him like this. Something of a role reversal for these two. Hansimo doesn't know what to make of it. El Hansimo is going to keep his eyes on those fellas in the front row. Hey, you could be in the front row, too. It's easy enough to get a front row seat to Twin City Wrestling. Just come out to one of our events and show up on time. We have lots of seats. There's nothing like seeing a professional wrestling show up close and personal. If you've been watching uh, large televised wrestling shows for years and you've never been to one in person, a big throw like that, you can feel it like a, like a kick drum at a rock band. It just goes right through your body. You don't realize how physical these guys are. You want to know when the next live show is? Well, check us out on Facebook. Facebook.com slash TCW Promotions. Two of them lock up again. Jockeying for position. They do this. It's just part of their conditioning. Narciss Saint quite clearly grabbed El Hansimo by the back of the mask to pull him down. And the ref insists he's been telling Narciss Saint to keep off of the mask. That's an illegal tactic. You're not allowed to grab the guy's gear to throw him around. That might be legal in judo when you grab the guy's gi to gain some leverage or choke. Professional wrestling? No. They tie up. Oh, payback from El Hansimo. I think he grabbed a handful of Narciss Saint's hair to jerk him down to the mat. I don't think the referee is going to be particularly sympathetic to Narcissus Saint. You can't put your hands... Oh! Out of nowhere... Out of nowhere, Narcissus Saint throws a super kick right and into the jaw of El Hansimo. Knocks him cold. Gets a three count. Narcissus Saint! Let's check the replay on that, because I didn't even see that coming. Arguing with the referee, and then out of nowhere, oh, that wasn't even to the jaw, that was right to the side of the head. Narciss Saint scores a quick victory over El Hansimo. Hansimo is looking to see if he has all his teeth still. I guess we'll never know, though if this scrambled his features. What was that masking on? So there's Narciss Saint. We'll be seeing more of him in our next episode as uh, he's scheduled to face someone who may catch him off guard, make him pay for being so cocky. Back in just a few minutes with a look back on a man who made a surprise comeback this week, Shahir Rasul. Plus, our main event is still to come. Halifax's Sexton Phoenix battling the heavyweight champion, Dazzling Dick Durning. I'm Rick. I'm Rod. We're the TCW Tag Team Champions, and you're watching TCW on Eastwood. It's Eastlink, bud. Get it right. Eastlink. Welcome back. Earlier we saw Rick and Rodney Owens, the r, r Express, ambushed by two bearded men as they confronted owner Cyril Richards. One of the men is Shahir Rasul. Let's learn a bit about him. Oh, 
Tequila Championship Bola Sama. Weighing in at 195 pounds, Jair Razul. Taking you back in time to June 2013. There is Shahir Rasul from somewhere in the Middle East. Guy's got a crazy look in his eye. Someone tried to explain to me that he is religious. I don't know to whom or what he is praying. I don't know what kind of groups he is affiliated with. But in a military city like Halifax, I don't imagine there's a lot of love for this guy. He has some bizarre rituals, and even when his rituals are done, Shahir Rasul does not stop being bizarre. Make no mistake about it, though. This guy's a fighter. Whoever he's about to face is in for a rough time. Your next competitor weighing in at 175 pounds, Sean Cassidy! Bursting through the curtain with some energy is Sean Cassidy. With some decidedly upbeat music, the fans dig this guy right away. He's a little smaller than Rasul, but sometimes, as you will see over the next several weeks, size it matters not judge him by his size do you and the bell rings we're underway Rasul and Cassidy sizing each other up they lock up I'm eager to see what kind of wrestling we'll get out of uh, Shahir Rasul ah none so far he just steps on his opponent and starts biting him in the face That's not classy, that's not professional, that's not wrestling. It's gonna get an earful from the referee about that. Perhaps you could say that that was in bad taste. Although I'm sure Sean Cassidy could be quite delicious. Cassidy trips Razul into the ropes, runs right up his back. Follows it up with an elbow to the jaw. Brings him out of the corner, gets reversed. Cassidy into the corner. Razul mistimes in an attack. Eats steel. Twisting neck breaker. Advantage Cassidy. Sean Cassidy tries to continue the momentum. Misses a clothesline, misses an elbow. Razul with a grazing spinning boot. I don't know how much he got on that, but it was enough to take Sean Cassidy down, not enough to keep him down for more than about a one and a half count. He's got to keep his shoulders on the mat for three to get the victory. Oh, he'll be feeling that tomorrow. Leg drop right across the nose. Two hands full of ears into the eyes. The referee is having a heck of a time controlling Shahir Rasul. It's almost as though Rasul is on some kind of mission here to break all of the rules tonight. That was a pretty nifty move. Leg drop across the back of the neck while Sean Cassidy was draped across the second rope. Charges into the corner with a knee to the midsection. Takes Cassidy down. What a weird guy. Well, missed that shot. I, I think I think Shahir Razul basically squashed Sean Cassidy in the corner. Two wasn't enough to keep him out. Razul doesn't look frustrated though. He's like some kind of bearded zombie. 
Is he gonna go for a suplex? Takes him up and then over. Tries to score a pin. Not quite enough. The ref is not blind. The ref is right there in perfect position to see that Shahir Razul had his shin right across the throat of Sean Cassidy. Razul's calling on some unseen spirits to give him strength. Cassidy drops and it pops back up after stunning Shahir Rasul, off the ropes, prepares for an attack. They collide, and Rasul ends up reversing it, pancaking his opponent to the mat. Again, can't quite get three. Now he's getting frustrated. This could be unfamiliar territory for Shahir Rasul, some kind of airborne attack. He doesn't look very steady up there. Leaping, misses. Probably hurt his shoulder or arm on that one. Sean Cassidy looks much more comfortable up there, but misses a leg drop. There's a reason they call them high-risk maneuvers, because there's a lot of risk involved. If your opponent moves, you're in big trouble. Both men a little bit uh, slow to get up. Goes for a clothesline, spins around, trips, no. Face buster, lands in a submission hold. Shahir Razul puts the Peruvian necktie on Sean Cassidy. Cassidy has no way to get out of that, he taps. It's either tap or go unconscious. Looks like he may have kept it on long enough to make him black and out. Your winner by submission, Shahir Azul. Referee's checking on Sean Cassidy. Oh, he really needs to get this is inappropriate. Cassidy's face turns purple as Shahir Razul wraps a belt around his neck and then beats him with it and then just casually steps out of the ring as though nothing happened. What a weird guy. This is somebody the r, &R Express are going to have to face. r, &R has faced a lot of technical talent over the months. I don't know if they've faced anybody as, well, weird as Razul. We're minutes away from tonight's main event, TCW heavyweight champion Dazzling Dick Durning to defend against a man who's been chasing him for months, Sexton Phoenix. Here's a look back at the two of them and some of the matches they've had.
ladies and gentlemen, to our competitors this evening, this is for the PCW Heavyweight Championship of the world, the challenger from Halifax, Nova Scotia, weighing in at 201 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Sexton Phoenix challenging tonight for the TCW Heavyweight Champion. He's a man who is never friendly with the fans, even the ones who look like that. Even the guys in the front row seem to love him. He always has such a sour expression on his face. Sexton Phoenix has been wrestling professionally in the Maritimes for uh, for years now. Ladies and gentlemen of the TCW Nation, please put your hands together for the reigning heavyweight champion of TCW, weighing in at 225 pounds from Hollywood, California, the one, the only dazzling Dick Durning! Dazzling Dick Durning making an explosive entrance to the Liverpool Fire Hall. Can't wait to get his hands on Sexton Phoenix. These guys have been circling each other for months. Now their paths finally cross. We have to take a quick network break. Promise we'll be back with the full main event here on TCW on East Lake. Welcome back to Liverpool, Nova Scotia. I'm Scott Simpson, ringside, as Twin City Wrestling makes its debut. The match has begun between Dazzling Dick Durning in white, the TCW heavyweight champion. And the man in the black tights from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Sexton Phoenix. They're off to a fast start. Durning gets the early advantage with a solid clothesline. This guy has such reach. Hands of stone. Takes Phoenix into the corner. Comes out with a high arm drag. Both of these guys have everything it takes to be a champion. They can work high impact moves. They can do traditional wrestling, as we're seeing here, working on a body part. Oh, cheap shot. That was such a cheap shot. How unsportsmanlike by Sexton Phoenix. The referee was calling for a clean break as Phoenix had taken the easy way out and made his way to the ropes rather than just fighting out of the hold. Does it again. Here's our view from the uh, super fan cam at ringside. Well, trust me, there's nothing I'd like to do more than get the hell out of Liverpool. Then go home! I will once I win the Wow. Ph Phoenix is spending too much time jawing with the fans and coveting that gold. Manages to close line Durning on the top rope, but gets caught in another arm drag. Durning is more than just Flash, he's a smart champion. He knows Phoenix has a lot of strength in those shoulders and upper body. So he's taking the time to work through them, take apart that arm, take apart that shoulder. That little insult to injury with a smack to the back of the head too. Durning's an honorable champ, but I, I tell you, he, I don't think he'd be above playing dirty if it came to that. Bars the arm, snaps it, takes Phoenix over, drops a leg, grabs the arm back. Looks like he's trying to take him into a hammerlock, but Phoenix is moving with the hold and avoids that. Bars the arm again, 
Phoenix is looking for a way out. Looked like he was going to take him to the corner, but grabs a handful of hair and backs him into the opposite corner. Are we going to get a clean break for a change? Oh! That worked against Phoenix. Gets chopped once, twice, three times. Are we going to see a quartet of these? Nope, head first into the turnbuckle. Durning takes Phoenix across the ring. Goes to charge in, is lifted over the corner. Oh, a cheap shot of his own. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. It looked like Durning was going to come in off the top rope, but Phoenix pushed the ref into the ropes, sending Durning off balance, and he landed on his shoulder. Oh, Phoenix noticed that before I did, and he's immediately starting to pound on Durning's shoulder. Ooh. Smack to the face. This guy shows no respect for anybody. The referee, the fans, certainly not the champion. Pops up a lot faster than Durning, who's still reeling. And I, I don't know what Sexton Phoenix just said to the fans, but it was rude enough that those smart Alex in the front row... We're impressed. Oh, Durning even delivering moves right now was favoring his shoulder, I was going to say. I don't know if he's going to be able to continue after this. You can see he was thrown right up against the, the steel. Uh, how do we describe that? While the ref was checking the health of the champ, Phoenix uh, planted a boot between the legs of our champion. There's no denying that Sexton Phoenix is a smart, smart guy. But man, he's a dirty player. Looks like he wants to take Durning's arm off and take it back home to Halifax with him. Neck breaker. Going for the cover. Not even able to get to. Phoenix is planting a boot in the back of Dazzling Dick Durning. This just shows you how strong Durning is, that he has an injured shoulder, possibly separated, and he's still fighting back. Sexton Phoenix quickly puts an end to Dick Durning's offense with a thumb to the eye. The referee keeps admonishing Sexton Phoenix to play within the rules, yet he continues to cheat. He's smart enough to do most of it behind the referee's back. An elbow takes Durning down. I, th I think that's the first time I've ever seen Sexton Phoenix smile. And he smiled while he had the champ in pain. Durning slugging with, a, with rights. His left shoulder not even strong enough to pull Sexton Phoenix off the ropes. Phoenix jumps up and kicks, turning right in his injured shoulder. His front row, smart Alex, <laughs> chanting that Sexton rules. I was about to say what a, it's a weird thing to start working on the on the champ's legs, given that it's his shoulder that's injured right now. But Phoenix shows some uh, method to his madness. Great vining the leg and then stomping on the shoulder. Again, more damage to the upper back and shoulder. Phoenix has a clear strategy here. Up to the second rope. Leg drop. Durning is stunned, can he get out? He manages to kick out. Phoenix is gonna have to come up with some more strategy. 
Perhaps taking the wind out of the champion, Dick Durning, will give him an advantage here. Cutting off the wind without it being a choke. The referee's right there to make sure that's legal. Using his body weight to hold Durning down, but he fights his way up. Couple shots to the midsection, comes off the ropes. And a knee to the body. Takes Dick Durning right over. Headbutt to the shoulder. One, two, and... Phoenix has got to be getting frustrated. What's it going to take to put the champion, Dick Durning, away? More damage to the shoulder. I can't help wondering that if if Phoenix if Phoenix doesn't defeat Durning tonight, he'd be wise to ask for a rematch because with that injured shoulder, now he knows. Now he knows Durning's weak spot. And this could have exposed Phoenix's weak spot as we get a good look at that Twin City Wrestling Championship belt that both of these guys are so passionately fighting for. Phoenix gets to his feet, stopping the double count. Runs right into a chop. Two of them. Right hand to the face. Another one. Durning showing some fire coming back. He can only use one arm right now, it feels like. Fighting entirely with his right arm as his left is almost useless. Gives him a spine buster. But Phoenix is able to put the heel of his boot into the eye socket of the champion, Dazzling Dick Durning. Durning into the corner with an elbow. Snapmare. Oh. Pair of punishing moves, unable to put Phoenix out for the night. Calling on the fans for some support. Again, he's, he's, it's, he's virtually fighting with one hand behind his back. Flying forearm off the second rope. Durning calls that the ATM. Signaling that this is the end. Could it be? A boot to the midsection, going for the pop shot. Doesn't have what it takes. Gets a DDT. That was a close one. Durning's arm was, was pinned awkwardly under his lower back there. I think Sexton's running out of ideas. Oh, he has some energy left, but does he have any more ideas? Does he have anything left in his arsenal to deliver? Takes the champ off the ropes, twisted, picks him up, pop shots! Three count and the champ defends. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and still reigning KCW Heavyweight Champion of the World, Dazzling Dick Burning! An impressive title defense by Dazzling Dick Durning. Virtually one-handed. What a great debut in Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Let's check the replay as the champ hoists him up, brings the knees up for the pop shot. Well done, Dazzling Dick. Thanks to Eastlink for putting us on the air for the debut. Next time, r, &R versus the Bearded Bombers, Narciss Saint versus Julius Fantana, and the enormous Riddick Stone from Liverpool. I'm Scott Simpson. Check us out online, and hopefully we'll see you at the matches.